Business Brain, episode 463 for Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where together we like to tune our business brains by examining things in our businesses, in our personal lives, and really help to kind of tune things so that we can keep living that charmed life here in Durham, New Hampshire after the long holiday weekend. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How was your fourth? The fourth was good. I, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I was away last week for a little bit. We took our niece to Montreal and we came back and we're home for a couple of days before the, the holiday weekend started. But I, even with that, I wound up, I'll say taking the weekend off. Um, that probably means something different to me than it does to uh, most people hearing it. So I'll explain. But I, what I didn't do was all the normal things that I would do on like a Monday or a Tuesday. Right. Uh, we were basically sure. home. We didn't. We went to a concert on Monday night. Monday night. We, we went and saw Robert Plant and Alison Krauss, which was great. Nice. Yep. yep. Um, but other than that, we were just home kind of empty nesting. Our niece was away with her boyfriend for the weekend. So we just kind of enjoyed, you know, kind of re reacclimating to the, the empty nest, uh, which is sort of a yo-yo for us. When we have people home. We don't have people home, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yep. We're in that phase, which is fine. But um, so I didn't do all my normal things, which gave me freedom from my own normal constraints of like, well, it's Monday. I got to do these things or it's Tuesday. I got to do these things. And what I wound up doing on Monday was a couple of things that I had not really had time to do. They weren't huge priorities, but they were things that were important to me, like sort of work wise. And right. it was like, it was really, it was great to be able to truly spend some time, time on these without worrying about, oh, well, I still need to do X, Y, or Z today. It was like, no, when I finish with this, I'm just going to go back to the house and chill and maybe make dinner or, you know, whatever. And, um, I found that really valuable. I, I'm, I'm starting to, I'm, I'm trying to think about how I can afford myself more of that kind of time. I, I, in theory, I should be able to, I mean, I, I've, you know, divested myself of a business that uh, took up a ton of my time. I've right. managed other things. And so it's like, well, you know, I, I don't have my kids hockey games and dance recitals to go to anymore. Like I have filled up the time that's available to me and I'm thinking maybe I need to be more intentional about not doing that as much and leaving myself that what I'll call play time. I, most people probably wouldn't call it playtime. They'd say, well, you're still working. Like, yeah, sure, but, but, but yeah, yeah as I think it's really valuable to have a little bit of playtime, a little bit of freedom, flexible time, uh, you know, yeah, not where just, for me, it's time that there's no output required, no output required. That's it. Yeah. And, and so you can, uh, research things and, you know, look into something. And I, I also have this, you know, total problem where I, I'm thinking about the next thing I need to do while I'm doing something else. Right. And it, and not being able to and maybe focus or enjoy what I'm doing because I'm thinking, okay, once I get this done, I've got to go do this. I, I've got to <laughs> do that other thing. And that's for me, yeah. that's especially true. If I'm doing something that's, you know, one of these sort of not highly prioritized things like, well, I'm, I'm giving myself time to do this, but I know I, you know, and I don't like the next word I'm going to say. I know I should be doing X, Y, or Z, or I know I have scheduled to do X, Y, or Z. I am expecting myself to create output for these other things. So I, I, yeah, I need to, I need to give myself more of that freedom, I think, because it made me more productive in a, in a yeah, sense. That's good. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm playing with this. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it for myself, but. You know, I'll find a way. Yeah, you'll figure it out. Yeah. Thinking about it is the first part, right? It is. And, yeah. Uh, I think that's I think that's great. Making plans uh, not to plan. <laughs> yeah. It's it's very good. Hey, we have a, a I thought a pretty good listener uh question to yeah. I'll talk about CRM if you want to jump into that. Yeah, Patrick and, uh, asked a very simple question. What is a good lightweight CRM tool? Uh he says, you know, I, I think the entire audience would appreciate a discussion about this. 
I recently left a company that I prepared and then sold to, oh wait, am I looking at the right? Yeah, I'm looking at the right thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah that- uh, and sold the private equity and am now am consulting with other small businesses, helping them build infrastructure and value. I don't need a full email marketing tool like a HubSpot, but I do need to keep track of the people I've spoken with or emailed. And I need to keep track of what was discussed so I don't repeat myself. Um, the standard Mac applications that Patrick uses are not up to the tasks. He says, I used busy contacts in the past to do part of this, but Apple doesn't allow busy contacts to see huh. emails any longer. Any thoughts about this? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, my, I think you and I are similar in this regard, Shannon, that we started doing this kind of stuff before there really were any yeah. tools that were available to small businesses. I know they were available to large businesses, but we couldn't afford them. So I used FileMaker to create my own CRM, but but it also doesn't Same. really link with email, right? So yeah. I, I wind up just, before I send an email, if it's something I need to log in FileMaker, I just do a command A, command C, and copy the entire, you know, select all, command, copy the email, and then paste it into FileMaker. I could automate that. As I'm saying it out loud, I realize, wow, you know, something like Keyboard Maestro would automate that probably pretty quickly because FileMaker's got a lot of hooks. So I could even automate that part of it, but I haven't needed yep. to. So Yeah, I I, uh, I agree. I think it's a great question. And um, so many of these CRMs are very complex and, you know, do far more than perhaps, you know, a small business owner may, might need them to do. Yeah, Patrick was was alluding to. Uh, I I responded to to Patrick. I did recommend he take a look at like Monday.com, which I thought it, you could pare it down pretty well um, to do what you want it to do, but uh, it's still you know it still can be pretty heavy and do a lot of things. I mean, I know folks that you know are in that use Salesforce and that are just like, oh, I can't change because I'm so. I've, I've taken years to build this thing out yes. and, and they just can't, can't do anything. I, I also use FileMaker Pro. Um, it, it is a little bit more uh, reliant on you to, to teach it what you want it to do. But if you find a good FileMaker Pro programmer that can help you build something for yourself, um, it's incredibly powerful and, the key is it's incredibly customizable to do exactly what you want to do with these automations and scripts. And um, it, it takes a little bit more upfront, but like I have a couple different uh, FileMaker databases I've used for years. And over time, I've just continued to modify them and they Same. work fantastic. I, yeah. yeah, I, I do. I, it, it, throughout my career, because I'm a nerd and I'm comfortable just mm-hmm. diving into something like FileMaker, which really it does require a little bit of nerdiness to get in there, yes. but it's not nearly, it's not, it's not a lot, right? You don't have to be a programmer by any stretch to be able to no, use you do not. Maker. Right? There's a lot you can do just as if, if you have a little bit of interest in it. And, and I actually have used chat GPT to help me with a few scripts oh, and smart. a few yeah. programs. Hey, tell me how to do this. I want this field to do this when I do X. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's helped me, take a little bit deeper dive than I normally would. And then, like I said, I, I have a, a great FileMaker Pro programmer that I met through Fiverr uh, yep. and I uh, use them when I need to do something more robust, but that's, it's rare that I do that. And sure. buying FileMaker, you know, versus a paid subscription because uh, I just use a standalone app. I, I, I love it. I think yeah. it's great. Yeah. Super I, versatile. The, 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 the one issue that I cause myself by being, nerdy and willing to create my own tools or, or use a, you know, a framework like a file maker or something to create my own thing is that I don't spend the time to research the other tools that could replace it. Right. Mm, and, sure. and, and that definitely cost has cost me in the past, like not moving to say WordPress as early as, as we could have with like the Mac observer cost us we, you know we used a yeah. content management system that i wrote from scratch which yeah, was amazing yeah. at the time but we held on to it in my estimation too long and it cost us because every feature we wanted to add we had to do a hundred percent of the heavy lifting on whereas right. if we had moved to wordpress or even you know like salesforce you said you know people have plugins that they've built out 
Well, those are plugins that other people have developed. You can develop your yeah. own, but you you can also leverage the work other folks have done, and that can be really valuable. So, um, so I you know I I recommend FileMaker in that it works for me, but yes. um. I, you know, take a look at some of these other tools too. And, uh, you know, we'll put a link. I found a good article that, that links a bunch of these kinds of tools. Of course it mentions Monday and Salesforce in there, but it's got a couple others that, that might help for you. And of course, if any of you know of good tools, let us know feedback at businessbrain.show. In addition to being able to help out, uh, Patrick and the rest of the audience here, you also qualify yourself, uh, for the drawing, that we are doing this year for a MacBook Air. So again, feedback at businessbrain.show. Uh, send it in and, and let us know. All right, look, we all know when running our small businesses, those unexpected costs can pop up anytime. Equipment breakdowns, payment delays, license, permit fees, all kinds of stuff, right? And what we do know is if we don't address them quickly, they can make or break our businesses. But the traditional loan process is too slow to help. The solution you need... Our sponsor, Zinch. Zinch is a direct lender that makes financing fast, simple, and built around your needs. If you're generating over 10 grand in monthly revenue and have been in business for over six months, Zinch can fund up to $250,000 in less than two days. The process is simple and quick. You answer some basic questions about your business and you receive a pre-qualified offer in less than five minutes without affecting your credit. Then you complete a simple application. Once approved, one of Zinch's loan advisors will review the options and help you choose the best one for your business. You can sign your loan documents securely online and receive funds into your bank account within 24 hours. Zinch makes it really easy because they are designed specifically for small businesses like all of us. This is great for service businesses who have no capital, right? If you need it and need it fast, Zinch is the way to go. See how much financing you can get with Zinch. And right now, Zinch is waiving application fees for all of you who listen to Business Brain. That's a $250 value. Just go straight to this URL, financingthatworks.com. You're right. That's financingthatworks.com. And I have to tell you the next part verbatim. Loans made or arranged pursuant to a California finance lender's law license. And our thanks to Zinch for sponsoring this episode. We all know that project management tools are supposed to help us move faster and stay organized. But if you're still jumping between 50 different tabs with 16 different project management tools just to do your job, then maybe you haven't found the right tool yet. And we've got one for you. This is where our sponsor Notion comes in. And today I'm excited to share that they just launched Notion Projects, which includes new powerful ways to manage projects and leverage the power of their built-in AI features too. Notion Projects combines project management with your docs, your knowledge base, and AI so you can stop jumping between tools and stop paying too much for them too. In just one workspace with Notion, you can do everything you need to get your projects over the finish line, from the brainstorming to the drafting of the launch plans to organizing sprints and keeping everyone on deadline. Notion is super customizable. You can view projects any which way. You've got to check it out. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects. You can try it for free today at notion.com slash business brain. That's all lowercase notion.com slash business brain. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show, which is great. Go right now to notion.com slash business brain. Check it all out. And our thanks to notion for sponsoring this episode. Hey, Shannon, you know, uh, over the weekend, we saw something even I didn't predict uh, happening over at Twitter. Um, I, not that I've predicted much of what's happened over there, but something, <laughs> <laughs> I, it, you know, we, we saw this rate limit thing happen. Now, yeah. there have been a lot of strange. Explain, explain what that is. It, well, I, I want to. that are not. Okay. So Twitter over the weekend decided to start limiting the number of tweets you could read per day, I believe is yep. what, what they were doing. Um, not Number of tweets that you could post, not that would be a normal rate limit kind of thing, not the number of replies, not even the number of likes that you can do, but literally the number of tweets that you as a consumer, as a customer, as a, a visitor of Twitter could read. Now, 
And you had to be logged in. Well, it was no more visitors. Oh, right. right? That's right. You yeah. had to be logged yeah. in to do it. That's right. Yeah. So right. Twitter went from being this very open thing where you could, you know, see it and, and read it and all of that stuff to being a, essentially a version of a walled garden. Now, a lot of people complained about this. This is the first time I've seen complaints that that made um, that, that were not that were related to Twitter, the service as as the the sort of the the foundational fundamental technological parts of the service there's a lot been a lot of complaints since Elon took over I, a, sure. most of those to me can be interpreted as well I, I think he sides more with the other political yeah. team than I ideological. side ideological yes. ideological yeah. right where it's like yes. oh okay but but like what about twitter like you could still, if you ignore all of those people that are posting about their other ideological stuff that you don't want to, that doesn't interest you or, or you don't yeah, want to see, don't follow them. Don't follow them and then you'll <laughs> yeah. be fine. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. um, but this was the first one where it was like, oh man, this is really, this might be the end of Twitter it, because it has, it is a fundamental change to what Twitter is. And as someone who had published a website for decades that was, in a sense, the same idea as Twitter at the core, which is I want as many people who care to read what we have to, to, to share to be able to read it, right? Like that, that was right. Twitter's whole thing. That was obviously a very different um, dynamic to the sites, to, you know, comparing Twitter and Mac Observer. But in, a, in essence, it's on the web. Come read it if you want, right? Like that, that was sort of the, <laughs> the, the gist. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, he did, they did say it was temporary, and their, okay. uh, yeah, and their uh, explanation, which I don't think they did very well. See, this is, I think, the, the takeaway for me is how you communicate with your customers. Okay. Um, because this, it, it was kind of just Musk uh, posting, hey, we're doing this, you know, like immediately. And I it's think already that happened. Free, yeah. It's, 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 it's ongoing right now. Yeah. So everybody starts kind of, not everybody, but, but people heavily into it start, you know, what, what's going on? This is crazy. Um, I can't most, read all Most people, you know, most people's first, uh, awareness of it was that they would get a, a rate limit message saying you've read yes. too many tweets for the day. And yeah. then that was that. And that sounds crazy. And, it, uh, yeah. You know, I, what if, I don't understand go, is like from a technical standpoint, why didn't they just like we ran into this at Mac Observer. Apple would have an event and we would start posting live updates about the event. Sure. And the first time we did that, man, we got way more traffic than we ever imagined. And we had a like we had an issue with the servers. And I'm assuming that's what's going on here with Twitter. They're having an issue with their it, servers, trying to limit yeah. the load. I, I would guess. Perhaps. I don't but, know. And, but, and that's but a there's good... caching. Like you can I get it. I get it. You can I, like you could use Cloudflare to cache your site now where the, 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 the requests aren't even hitting you, but once an hour or something. Now, certainly people aren't going to get the latest and greatest, but isn't that better than nothing? So I don't, I don't I, know. A couple of caveats. One is from the outside, we don't really know what's going on. Correct. What's, you know, they're there. If you go up to the Twitter support thing and search rate limit, you'll see that they say, Hey, we're battling spam and bots. Uh, okay. Same. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like we all um, are on the web. It's yes. Welcome to yes. the club, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so the other part is, you know, and I want to talk about this on an upcoming episode, um, this concept of Parkinson's law about how the work expands to, to fill up how many people and resources you have. And it's kind of what I was know, talking Twitter, about at the beginning, carving out yeah. time and I still had time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you know, Twitter's done this massive cutback, you know, to where from like, almost 7,000 employees down to like 20 or I don't know, 1500 or something. And I, w I wonder if they've this weekend or over this holiday, they started to feel the pinch of some of this stuff and the sure. server issues and, uh, and I'm sure perhaps, that's right. I like, yeah, yeah, but they don't, it, it's, and I, I, I have a lot of respect for Elon, uh, certainly, but I don't think he puts a lot of time into, explanations of how things or why things are <laughs> He's no, just hard charges. No, and, I think, I think and, that yeah. is part of his, like what has led him to so much success is he sees yeah. so many things are obvious to him that are not obvious to most of the rest of us. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. but he, 
And I certainly, in a, at a very different level, have been guilty of this too, where it's like, what do you mean you don't understand this? Like, I don't have yes. time to explain this to you. And I think that's how he lives most of his life, is he sees these things that agree. are painfully obvious to him. He's flabbergasted at best, frustrated at worst, that other people aren't seeing the same thing. And occasionally with those things, it turns into a, a fantastic idea, like, you know, X.com with PayPal or whatever. Correct. Right? Like, it's Correct. like, holy crap. It's an amazing idea. When yeah. he first presented that to the world, I thought, well, how stupid. It, like, why would we use the Internet for commerce? We, The Internet's <laughs> not for that. Yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, I was yeah, wrong. Yeah. He was right. But, right. I, you know, but that was his thing. He was like, no, duh. It's, of course, it's going to be used for commerce, dummy. And and he was right. And I think you're right that some of that is here, too. To him, yeah. this was the most obvious answer for this. But. But he didn't explain it well. He is the he worst not. person he is. to run a social media site. I truly yeah. believe that. Because he is he is not good with fame. Like, he's good with a lot yeah. of things. Yeah. Fame is not one of them. And running a site where fame is part and parcel of how the site works and his, his presence on it. I mean, I think it's because of his fame on Twitter right, is the right. reason that he bought it. Right. Like I, I like, yeah, it, I, it's, it's the wrong business. He is the wrong one to have bought that business. And I think it's bad for him and for the business. I'm hoping that if, as, as if this evolves, it's been less than a year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping that as it evolves, he finds a role that, that works. And, you I mean, know, he hired a CEO, at, but he's he did, and not I letting she, that person do their job yeah, yet. Yeah, that's right. So he needs to uh, hopefully learn from this, and he, you know, getting some advice and uh, like, hey, again, it comes down to how you communicate it. If you came out and said, "Look, folks, we're having an issue here," yeah, uh, and so we're going to make some temporary changes. You may see some of this, but don't worry; it's just going to be for a few days as we kind of get this figured out. Well, that's one thing. And you, you kind of sharing your weakness. So maybe you yes. get some empathy. Um, but when you just hard charge blast it out there, it, 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 you know, you can't assume that your customers are going to understand what they don't understand. You can't, <laughs> right, right. It, it, right. It's, it's like, yes, you definitely cannot can't. assume that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like you, so you need to assume the opposite of that. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and how yeah. you really simplify it, um, <laughs> And I'm not sure we're, well, actually, I am sure we're not getting all of the story. Of course. And so. Yeah, because you know, so what, much of this is obvious to, like, if the if the problem is what we've described it as and only yeah. that, then, right. to, then I'm suffering from the same thing. There are solutions that are painfully obvious to me. And why aren't they obvious to that guy? Well, they either aren't. Yeah. But I think they are because I'm, I'm pretty sure he's smarter than me, but maybe not. Uh, yeah. But I'm pretty sure he is. And. And, and, and or I don't have all the right information because yeah, there's yeah. so many like if the problem is bots and all of that, this is a solved problem. Everybody on the Internet deals with this and it's right. really not that hard. Uh, yeah. And I, that's where I think when you leave all this space open for people to speculate and, you know, it's very bad timing. You know, you have your competitors coming out with other products. Oh, I think yeah. Facebook's going to release threads this week. Yeah. Um, oh, to, no, to no. Try to... In, Instagram is releasing threads. Instagram. It's not, it's not Facebook. Threads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. they're, they're, I know they're all part of the same company, but right, they're being right. very so, careful about how they're marketing that. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. And, and so, you know, you're going to, you have people that, um, they don't like the instability. Yeah. They don't like, uh, you know, maybe some of his more, you know, bold statements or whatever, but sure. I agree. I think he needs to step back and focus on product and just be quiet a little bit. Um, but you know, when you're, I, I always go back to say when look, all the positive feedback he's got received by being the way he is, it's gotta be very difficult to change. Yes. So, I, but, but again, key takeaway, how you, yeah. How you communicate with your customers lead times on changes instead of just dropping things instantly. We're not doing this anymore. Being so reactive, critically important. Um, and let us know what you think. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Share your thoughts. Um, do you, how, how do you use Twitter with your business? We'd love to hear about it and uh, let us know. Yeah, in the meantime, you can find me on Mastodon or Blue Sky because th those have remained up. <laughs> so I'll mm -hmm. put links. I'll put links in the show notes for both of those. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah. and we'll see where we'll see where we are next week once Threads launches and all of that good stuff. Yeah. 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 Thanks That's for hanging great. out, folks. Make sure to check out our sponsors, Financing That Works, where Zinch is going to waive their $250 application fee. Notion.com slash business brain. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time.